Good evening, everybody in South Africa. If you're in my part of the world uh, tonight, good morning to those of you in New Zealand. Uh, hi, Des. I hope you're having a good uh, or had a good day. We'll chat in the morning. Um, my name is Andrew Kerr. Welcome to the Network Migration Services webinar on New Zealand tonight. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Ruan, as always, for setting up our marketing meetings, uh, excuse me, our, uh, our webinars. Uh, Ruan is our marketing manager. Um, I want to say thank you to Liz for joining us this evening. Liz is our HR manager and runs our recruitment division. And thank you so much to Desiree Lindicu for always being there for us. She is our operations manager and provisionally licensed advisor and is based in our Auckland office. So just thanks, guys, as always, for being there. Thanks for setting this evening up. Tonight's going to be relatively quick because, being quite frank with you guys, I'm actually not feeling that great. I've got a, a major ear infection, which means that my voice is echoing in my own brain. So I am on antibiotics. So um, just feeling a little. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shorten it too much, but I'm just going to get to the point a little bit quicker than I normally do. I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We've got over 100 people watching us tonight. Um, on the front slide there, you'll see my registration number for Immigration Advisor Authority. Uh, the point on that is if you're going to use an advisor, please make sure that they are licensed or especially that they are, the initial uh, consultation that you get from uh, a company that potentially wanted to use, you do speak to the licensed advisor. Um, why? Because it protects you, simply. If, if, uh, if a company doesn't do a good job and they're not licensed, then you've got no recourse. If a company makes, you know, doesn't do a good job and they are licensed, then you have recourse because you can report that company to our governing body, which is the Immigration Advice Authority in New Zealand. So it protects you as a consumer. We, we must renew our licenses every year. And I've been licensed with, uh, since it's become mandatory, which I think is about 14, 15 odd years now. Um, Anyway, so I am fully licensed. I'm also a member of the New Zealand Association for Migration and Investment, which is a body that looks after us advisors and also approaches government on our behalf and, of course, the general public's behalf. And there's just um, just on that front slide, there's eight of our service partners, um, uh, which, of course, again, thank you to all of our service partners for being involved. I just want to go through the slides. I suggest you take screenshots of the slides uh, tonight. Um, you know, not the irrelevant ones, clearly, but when I come to the point structures and the way it all works in the next 10, 15 minutes, then I suggest you take screenshots of them. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so for you to be able to see it. And I can't now see the questions if you put them into the chat room. But if you put those questions in the chat room, Desiree will answer you. If it's on an immigration uh, question, Desiree is a licensed advisor. She's legally able to answer you. Non-licensed advisors aren't legally able to answer a question on immigration advice. Um, and if it's on, you know, recruitment or job search, whatever, please feel free to put something into the chat room and Liz will answer you because uh, I actually can't see the questions. So type them into the chat room while I'm talking, feel free. But if you do want a consultation, they are free. I consult either at our offices in Johannesburg or over Zoom, Skype, Teams or Google Meet no matter where you are in the world. In fact, we've got clients from all over the world. We've got clients in, in Sri Lanka, the Philippines, China, England, US, Canada. So with technology today, it doesn't really matter where you are. We're able to deal with you. I have offices in Auckland as well. As you clearly know, Desiree Lindicu is our operations manager and runs the Auckland operation. So once again, just thank you to the, to the um, um, uh, service providers that we have. Um, and um, if you want to be assessed, as I was just about to say, they're free. So you just need to ruin, typed my uh, email address into the chat room earlier, andrew at networkmigration.com. All our emails are our first names. Desiree at networkmigration.com, andrew at networkmigration.com, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so if you want to be assessed, just send me your CVs. I don't care what they look like at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. They're going nowhere. They're, going, they're just coming to me or Desiree. Um, and if you want to be assessed, send me your CVs with the structure of your family in a separate paragraph. Like I'm 42, my wife's 38, we have three children, they are two, six, and nine, or whatever they are. I need to know the structures of your families in order to advise you correctly. It's as simple as that. Thank you. Um, so I just want to jump on to the next slide. A little bit about network. Network's been around for, gosh, it was opened in the UK back in the 80s, but, uh, but it was opened in South Africa in 1989. I joined the company in 1993. 
uh, as a consultant working for the company in, in 1996, I had an opportunity to purchase the company, which I did. So I'm the sole owner of Network Migration South Africa um, with offices in New Zealand as well. And we are quite literally the one-stop shop. We have three divisions. Uh, my division, if you like, uh, uh, runs the visa application process. So Desiree and I do all of the application work or sign off all the work. We clearly have a team of a group of people. We call them file managers working under us that work with you as the consumer to collect all the necessary documentation we require to submit the relevant visa applications, be them work visas or residency visas or visitors visas or student visas or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. So um, Desiree and I do all of the signing off and the submissions of the applications to Immigration New Zealand. That's our division. Rose's division. Rose is my wife. She's just handed me a drink of water. Thank you, Rose. Um, Rose's division is the relocation division. So we're partnered with everyone that we can possibly be partnered with to make this journey um, as simple as possible and as smooth as possible for you. And by that, I mean... We're partnered with the moving companies. We're partnered with the pet removing companies. We're partnered with the banks. We're partnered with the uh, money movers, the people that actually uh, shift your funds and give you advice on everything. Um, uh, we're partnered with um, meet and greet services. We're partnered with um, a pet educational centers, um, et cetera. So, you know, no matter what you want, we're able to point you in the right direction. And those services of Rose's, are actually free to put you in touch with our service providers and arrange quotes, et cetera, on, on, the, on the processes that you actually require. And then the third division is run by Liz, Liz Fillewin. Liz is head of our HR. Uh, she's our HR manager. She's also in the process of becoming licensed herself, and she runs our recruitment company. We have actually two registered recruitment companies, uh, but Liz runs our recruitment uh, training and recruitment division. Now, by that, I mean that we have um, a process where not only do we job train you on the best ways to approach the New Zealand job market, of course, and we write your CVs and do your LinkedIn profiles, but we will actually, working with you, and I underline that, working with you, not just us, you as well, of approaching the New Zealand job market and actually sending out your CVs. So we're the only company that I know of, and I've been doing this for 30 years, ladies and gentlemen, we're the only company that I know of in this industry that goes that far when it comes to helping you find work. And I know this for a fact, okay? I know all the opposition players. I'm certainly not putting them down. Every company has their own business model. We just decided a few years ago to make our business model um, uh, and build it around the biggest piece of this whole jigsaw puzzle for New Zealand, and that's, of course, finding a job. I'm going to go through the New Zealand visa and points in a minute. Uh, relocation and partners, we won't talk about tonight. If you want to find out those services, just email rose, rose at networkmigration.com, and question and answers are hopefully being answered as we speak, although we'll have two minutes at the end. We can, uh, we can just allow you to ask more questions if you need them. Right, we've discussed that. Uh, that's me a couple of years ago. Mm. Uh, New Zealand. My home, my home, guys. I've lived. I haven't lived there for thirty odd years, um, but I still call it my home. Um, I love New Zealand. I love the people. I love the country. I love. I didn't like what uh, happened under the previous regime, government-wise. That's my personal opinion. Um, I do. I do like what is seemingly now happening under the new regime, under National Chris Luxon and his team, the new Prime Minister. Um, I love the fact that Erica Stanford has been appointed Minister of Immigration. Congratulations to her, as always. Uh, she's also Minister of Education because she is going to be announcing some practical changes, we believe, over the next month or so uh, that will just hopefully streamline uh, the process a little bit easier. And also a few question marks that we've had since they brought in the new accredited employer work visa process uh, that we as agents have had to the Right Honourable Erica Stadford uh, we've approached. We believe those will mostly be answered by the end of April. She's having a meeting with NZMI at the end of March where these uh, these discussions will be brought up. And her uh, direct comment on a television show a few weeks ago was she doesn't want to make knee-jerk immigration um, uh, decisions uh, like the previous regime did. Uh, she's going to do this with a lot of thought and a lot of purpose, and we're really pleased about that. All right, so... Sorry, somebody's phone's ringing, but I certainly cannot answer it. Right. So, as a, again, New Zealand. Guys, as, as you probably know, it's one of the prettiest countries in the world. 
Um, and by the way, congratulations to those uh, South Africans that are listening to me for being World Cup holders. Uh, you certainly deserved it. It was an awesome tournament. Right. There is not a visa on the planet that we cannot do. Skilled migrant, student, entrepreneur. I wouldn't touch the entrepreneur visas at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. They don't work. Immigration fully admit they don't work. Um, and they, they really they only approve 5% of them. So business and investment, no problem, or investment, no problem. Entrepreneur, I probably wouldn't touch it. If you want to find out why, just contact me. Um, but anyway, so skilled migrant, student, entrepreneur, business, accredited employer, work visa, residency applications, of course, um, spousal applications, visitors visas for job search purposes, visitors visas for holiday purposes. As I said, there's not a visa that we can't assist you with. Um, well, there we are. Spousal parent, of course, if you've got children in New Zealand um, and they're residents and have been a resident for three years, we can lodge a parent, parent application, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want any information at all, andrew at networkmigration.com, drop me an email. The information is free. And then if you want to have a co consult with me over virtual consult or, of course, face to face, they're also free. We only start charging our candidates if they engage our services. Simple as that. OK. I need you to listen to this, please. It's just going to introduce you to the accredited employer work visa, which is how 90% of your people listening to me tonight are actually going to get in. It's about one minute long, so just have a quick listen. Where no New Zealanders are available for a job, employers can hire a skilled migrant worker using the accredited employer work visa, or AEWV. Before inviting a migrant to apply for an AEWV, Employers must become accredited with Immigration New Zealand and complete a job check for the role they want to fill. This means migrant workers can have more confidence about the role they are coming to New Zealand for. To gain accreditation, an employer must be a genuine business in a good financial position and have no recent history of breaching employment or immigration law or business standards. The job check confirms that the job pays the market rate and the terms and conditions of the contract comply with New Zealand's employment standards. Before applying for a job check, employers need to advertise most roles to prove there are no New Zealand citizens or residents available for the job. After an employer's job check has been approved, you will be sent an email containing a link and a job check token. This means you can access the online portal and apply for your visa. The application process is all done online, where you will fill in your details and upload supporting documentation. Immigration New Zealand will check if you meet the requirements for the AEWV and that you have the skills and experience the employer is seeking. Once you are employed, your employer must provide you with information to help you settle into life in New Zealand and give you time to complete Employment New Zealand's online modules on employment rights while you are at work. The AEWV is designed to ensure only good employers can hire migrant workers and helps prevent migrant exploitation. More information about the AEWV is on our website. So take a screenshot of that page, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, it's explaining what the young lady there was talking about, um, you know, stage one employer accreditation. So just for your information, there's 28,000 accredited employers at the moment in New Zealand. New Zealand does need immigration. It's as simple as that. We only have five and a half million people and to fill the spaces and, and grow the economies and whatever, we need immigrants. We always have. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've done 17,000 families into uh, Australia and New Zealand because I'm licensed for Australia as well. So I've probably done, I don't know, 10,000 of those families into New Zealand and maybe 7,000 families into Australia. So, And with a success rate, by the way, of nearly 100%, there's really no reason this application should fail if you are healthy. In other words, no major health issues. So if you do have a health problem, please, you need to let me know. Um, no major criminal records. Yeah, we might have the odd speeding fine or two or the odd this or whatever we did when we were slightly younger or last week, but I'm talking major criminal records. So again, if there's a criminal charge against you, I need to know about it. Or if you were ever convicted, I need to know. Um, everything you tell us is private, of course. You're covered by the Privacy Act. And the third one is the job offer. So if you commit, let me say that again. If you commit 
to working with us to find you a job, then there's no reason this should fail. Now, define the word commit. A lot of you have probably been trying to find jobs from offshore and a lot of you are getting answers like you don't have the right to work or you need to be here or et cetera, et cetera. Nine out of 10 people that fly to New Zealand to find work are successful finding work. In fact, to give you a specific figure, in 2019, there was no COVID. We had 242 clients fly to New Zealand in that year to find work, two failed. Everybody else got a job. So that's what I mean about commit. We will definitely work with you to attempt you, attempt to assist you with finding employment whilst you're in your home country. But what if that doesn't work? What if you're sitting here for one month, two months, six months, two years, still sending out CVs and still finding work, not finding work? I had a client, not a client, somebody called me yesterday saying, I've been, I've been job hunting in New Zealand for two years. The person was a fitter. Now, that's insane because I've never had a tradesman land in New Zealand in 30 years and not get work, ever. So I just said to them, why don't you hop on a plane? Why don't you get over there? Why don't you do a visitor's visa, which allows you to go to New Zealand to look for work? In other words, you're telling immigration, I'm coming to look for work. You've got to be transparent with immigration. You can't so go there on a holiday and then find a job because you're, you're technically in breach of the rules because you went in on holiday. And if you've got some sharp visa officer working on your application, they'll decline it because you went on a holiday. So when you go to New Zealand to look for work, tell them you're going to there to look for work. Yes, you need to supply a lot more information if you're going to look for work. You need to show strong ties in your home country if you're going to look for work. Why? Because New Zealand says, well, what if you're coming to the country to look for work and you don't find work, what have you got back in your home country to go back to? So if you've sold your homes and cars and taken your children out of school and blah, 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 and you've all turned up at the airport, they won't even let you on the plane. I can promise you that. So this is what we do. We clearly would work with you to apply for a visa that go to allow you to go to New Zealand to look for work. That's that's You might only want that service from us. That's fine. We quote you accordingly. We quote you on every specific part of the visa process and break it down. You might come to us with a job offer, which means you don't need to look for work. You've already got one. Then we'd quote you just on doing the work visas, of course, for yourself and your, and your spouse if you've got one and children if you've got one, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I mean. You need to commit to the job search process. We're really good at what we do, ladies and gentlemen, but I can't sit here and promise you a job. And in fact, if any organization you're dealing with promises to find you a job, run far away because who can make that promise? You are the ones that have to sit in the interview. You are the ones that have to be interviewed. So surely it's a team effort. We'll work with you, train you, present you, prepare you, do whatever we can, and even send out your CVs, et cetera, et cetera, working with um, Liz, et cetera, et cetera, and Xenia. But can we guarantee that that's going to be successful? No, of course we can't, because you are the key to this whole process. You are the one that needs to be interviewed. So listen to us when we work with you because we'll hold your hand through the entire process. And I don't know if Des, and, uh, Des has seen it because she's had a full day in there, but we've had, oh, I think there was five or six comments, and, and frankly, a couple of them were about you, Des, um, today just from clients, just saying thank you, thank you, thank you to that on the, on the journey. I'm, we are so happy when we get those comments, you know, general comments. We post them. Uh, they are all legit comments we put on our website. Ruan does that for us, Claire's. And I was really pleased to say, I think I, I think I saw about four or five just thanking us for the journey that they've gone through. Some journeys have taken three years. Some journeys have taken three months. But we are with you until you are living in New Zealand and we take you all the way up to residency. And then if you want us to do the residency application, we quote you in New Zealand. Desiree can do that, no problem at all. Okay. So employer accreditation is essential. You should only be approaching accredited companies, all right? The job check is done by the employer. If they want help with it, we can help with it. Desiree is an excellent expert at it. So we can help with the job check process, and it's extremely important. A few of the employers lately have said, no, no don't worry, we're, we're going to submit our own job token, et cetera, et cetera, and yet they're hiring our candidate. And, of course, the job, the way they've done the job check and the ad or whatever has been wrong. So, of course, if it's wrong, immigration aren't going to approve it. And it's just going to stall the application and everybody gets frustrated about it. 
So we like to get involved from the get-go, from the time you start looking for work. We want to be involved. We want to be there with you. And we want to be with the employer. And we offer our services to the employer um, to, for advice at no charge. But the employer might say, well, listen, Andrew, can you do it for us? Of course we can. We can do the job check application for the employer, no problem at all. And then, of course, as you heard from the, from the talk from the lady in the previous slide, once the job check has been approved by immigration, which takes anywhere between one week to three weeks, then immigration uh, um, sends the job token to the candidate and or the agent. Clearly, if you're using an agent, they would send it to the agent. That's the right thing to do. And then we would upload the application into the relevant portals. The main applicant has a separate portal and spouse and children have their own portal as well. So that means we're applying then for the visa application. So once you've got the job token, which, as I said, takes a maximum of three weeks, we then upload the information and the process normally takes another three weeks, but it's taking a little longer at the moment, somewhere between three to six weeks. So from the day you receive a job offer that you sign, the process maximum would take nine weeks at best four. So one to two months to get your visa granted. Okay. Now, when you get an accredited employer work visa, immigration will only issue the visa if you meet the minimum requirements based on that occupational code. And that's called ANSCO. It stands for the Australia New Zealand Standard Classification of Your Occupation. There are thousands of occupations, so there are thousands of ANSCOs, clearly. You've got an ANSCO for a waiter. You've got an ANSCO for an accountant. It doesn't matter what occupation. You've got an ANSCO. But New Zealand doesn't necessarily want lower skilled people. In fact, uh, Erica Stanford, in the last calendar year, she was saying the other day that immigration took something like 170,000 immigrants into New Zealand, but 41% were of a... Uh, skill level that New Zealand doesn't didn't really necessarily be looking for. Okay, yes, they need fruit pickers during the fruit picking season, but do they need them for the whole year? No. So what they've done is ANSCOs four and five, you'll see here, are generally lower skilled occupations, which mean, at, at, but you've got to make more money, which normally means you won't succeed because you won't get a job if you are a waiter or a bartender or a shop assistant at $92,539 a year. No way on this earth will you get a job. So that has pretty much stopped people uh, with so-called lower, lower uh, occupational titles getting into New Zealand. What they're really concentrating on or trying to concentrate on is ANSCOs 1 to 3. The minimum wage requirement on that is $29.66 per hour, which is $61,500 a year. And frankly, if you're on an ANSCO 1 to 3 and you're not earning that money, then you're not being paid enough. All right. But if you issue an application which is earning, say, $29 an hour to immigration and you are a hairdresser, which is an ANSCO 3, then you won't get in because it doesn't meet the minimum requirement. So you've got to meet the minimum requirement in the job offer when you're coming to, of course, submit the application to immigration. I hope you've taken a screenshot of that. Now, you've got your job, okay? When you get your job, most of the time, immigration, the accredited employer work visa will be issued to you for five years. On that work visa, you will still get free schooling and healthcare, even though you're on a work visa. Within that five years, you want to be in a position that you could lodge a residency application. And you have three or four ways that you can lodge that application. One is if your occupation is on green list tier one. Take a screenshot. You can see construction sector, engineering sector, health and social services, IT, electronics, and telecommunication. Okay. Also green list tier one. These were added. Um, and as you can see, most of it is related to either oral oral dentists, you know, pharmacists, physios, social workers, speech language therapists, medical, audiometry. So healthcare, big demand, everywhere in the world, of course, healthcare is a big demand. But if you are on green list tier one, you have a choice. You don't need to lodge a work visa. Once you've got the job offer, you can go straight to residency. 
you can lodge a resume application straight away. As long as the job offer, of course, meets the green list tier one requirements and your background and qualifications meet the green list tier one requirements. And for green list tier one, you'll need a qualification. Most of the time, well, 99.99% of the time, you would need a qualification. In fact, 100% of the time. In saying that, in some for some visas, you don't need a qualification or for, or for, a, for some of the process, you don't necessarily need a qualification. I'll talk about that in a minute. All right. But if you're on green list tier one, you can lodge your residency application straight away. You don't have to. You can still lodge an accredited employer work visa and have your five years because if you're lodging residency, it's a little bit more expensive, but you'd be saving the costs, of course, of the work visa because you wouldn't have to do it. All right. And, and anybody uh, 16 years and over in the family would have to set the English test current rules. Okay, so you do that as and when you got the job offer, you'd nail that, get it out of the way, and then lodge your residency application. Processing time is still the same. Okay, green list tier two is your second pathway to residency if you're not on green list tier one. You can see uh, roles added March last year. I think I've got another slide here, but um, lots of the trades here agriculture, health, and social services again. Okay, there's some more green list tier two which are being added as we speak. Okay, so take a screenshot of both those pages. Just want to just get back here a second. Green list tier two, just in case you haven't taken a screenshot. So take a screenshot or a photo with your phone or whatever. A green list tier two. Now, green list tier two, you're issued a five year work visa, and after working for two years for the accredited employer, you can then lodge your residency application. Okay, so that's green list tier two, and there are some more occupations on green list tier two. Now, what if you're not on green list tier one or green list tier two? Does that mean you can't immigrate to New Zealand? No, it doesn't. Of course you can, if you qualify. And if you want to know how you qualify, contact me. Anyway, these are separate occupations that have their own current pathway. I don't think this is going to last long because to go to New Zealand for two years and then have to leave the country for 12 months afterwards is, in my opinion, insane. Um and I think the current Minister of Immigration will possibly tweak this to make, I don't know, I don't know. But to have to immigrate your family, go over there for two years and then leave for a year and then go back, that's just insane, right? This was brought in by the previous government. Anyway, these are roles that are exempt from holding the 2966 minimum wage, as you can see. So I hope you've taken screenshots of that. You must have experience in these roles, of course, to be able to get the job. You might not have a qualification. But, um, but you've got to have the experience that is required by the ANSCO, the, the Occupational Code. Okay, so green list tier one, green list tier two, or of course, you're getting a job on the special category visa. The other ways for you to get residency are based on you receiving six points from the simplified skilled migrant category, which came into effect about six months ago. Okay. Those points are allocated, as you can see here. This is just a, sorry, a medium wage, how it's increased over the last few years. All right. It was supposed to go to 3161 or something, uh, but uh, Erica Stanford canned that. I don't think she's going to make, uh, stick to the medium wage uh, increases at all, but we'll wait and see on that. I'm pretty confident she's not because she canned it. One of the first things she did when she came into power, uh, into her seat, Last uh, just after just before Christmas, where well, she she stopped that because it was supposed to happen in December, and she stopped it. Okay, so you need six points if you're going to get residency. If you're earning three times the minimum wage, remember the minimum wage is twenty nine sixty six an hour. Multiply that by a forty hour week, and then multiply that by fifty two weeks a year. That's how you get your salary. So if you're earning one and a half times the minimum wage, which is about 92000 you're getting three points for that. You've got to earn it each year for three years, of course, remembering your work visa is valid for five years. If you're earning two times the minimum wage, which is about 123000 you get four points. If you're earning three times the minimum wage, which is about 180000 then you'll get six points straight away, Okay, which means if you're earning that, you could lodge residency straight away if you're earning three times the minimum wage. The other way to get points is your qualifications if you have them, okay? Six points for a doctorate, five points for a master's, eight points for, excuse me, four points for a level eight um, or level seven honours, uh, excuse me, uh, level eight, which is an equivalent of an honours degree. And for postgraduate certificates or level seven bachelors, 
and or level seven qualifications, three points. So remember, you've got your five-year work visa. You've got a standard degree, for example. You've got three years. You get three points. I haven't shown you that slide yet, so sorry. Um, let me show it to you. Where is that slide? Ruin, I think we took that slide out by mistake. Okay, my bad, everyone. Excuse me. I took a slide out of this by mistake um, before. Yeah, I have. Okay, so my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. There's a slide exactly like this, which I actually took out about an hour ago. Um, Ruin, we need to put it back in, please. Um, thanks, man. Uh, but if you work in New Zealand for one year, you get one point. Two years, you get two points. And three years, you get three points. Pretty self-explanatory. So if you're not earning the money, i.e. one and a half, let's say you're on $75,000, maybe you're a graphic designer, young graphic designer, for example, then you are, and you've got the degree, you're getting three points for the degree, and then one, two, three years in New Zealand, another three points. So let's say you have an honours in graphic design, then you'd only have to work in New Zealand for two years, of course, because if you have an honours, you get four points, remember, okay? If you have a master's, you get five points. And you might be saying, well, hold on, I'm sitting here with a PhD. That means I can lodge residency straight away. You can't. They haven't, they haven't changed that. You get six points, but you still need to get a job offer and work for a short period of time before you can lodge residency. I'm guessing three to six months, and we'll know that in the next month, okay? Um, and clearly, you also get points for being registered. So you might be a plumber, you might be an electrician. I mean, there's hundreds of occupations that need registration. Pretty much everything to do with healthcare, as you can see, dieticians, midwives, chiropractors, psychologists, nurses, paramedic, blah, blah, blah pharmacists, etc. teachers, social workers, vets, surveyors. I already went through electricians, et cetera, et cetera. So there's lots of ways to get if you've in a job that requires registration to get those points. Okay. As I said, architects, plumbers, certified brain layers, et cetera, accountants, immigration advisors, barristers, solicitors. Um, these are all on the boats, of course, et cetera. Oh, there it is. That slide, actually, I should have put it way back. I just put it in the wrong slot. So there it is. There's your work experience um, slide, guys. 36 months, three points, 24 months, two points, and um 12 months is uh one point all righty so you've got the job offer green list here one green list here two high income or registration or qualification and work experience so there are five or four or five ways that you can get residency in new zealand you can't combine them by the way you can only pick one so you can't go high income and registration, okay? You can only pick one, all right? Which clearly, as I'm as I'm assessing you, remember they're free, I will run you through your best way to get residency. Okay, I'm just going to reduce this a little bit because I want to just go back to see if I've got any questions or queries, and I can't see them. Um, there we are. Uh, no, Samuel, you don't. Um, right, so the question is, well, it's a very good question. Do I pay once I have a job offer? No. And any company that works that way would be insane. All right. If you're going to engage our services, you would engage us with either paying the full amount where you get discounts. So this is all on the payment option sheets we send you, or you can pay a deposit. Um, and, and, and they're broken down quite a bit. So you might say, Samuel, for example, I just want you to help me find a job. So we'd quote you on that. In fact, you just tick, the, tick your own boxes in the quotes that I send you. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. So you're all answering the question. So that's fine. Right. So, ladies, you know, I'm 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 pretty much finished. But what I um Liz or Des, you'll answer that. Um. Okay. So, what was I going to say here at the end? Oh, you saying? Well, I don't have a qualification. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I've been a mechanic for 15 years, but I've never done a trade test, or I'm a hairdresser, and I've never bothered to do a trade test, or I'm a graphic designer, and I don't have a degree, or I'm a, you know, I, I've been working in sales, technical sales for the last six, 17 years, and I don't have a qualification. Does that mean I can't get in? No, it doesn't. You can either get in on high income, remember, or you can get in on your, let's say you've 
you can just get in. You get in on a work visa, but you don't have a pathway to residency. Then you've got five years to figure out a pathway to residency. Either upgrade your qualification or earn more money. I don't know if I'm saying that flippantly, all right? But it is a don't not contact us because you're not qualified or you don't think you're qualified, all right? I'll tell you if you don't qualify. I'll tell you straight up. Wouldn't take a dime off you to tell you that. We'll tell you immediately. And remember, all the consults and everything are free. Um, and everything I sent you is a very simplified process to understand. Before I log off, because I'm going to log off in 60 seconds, I just want to say something, ladies and gentlemen. Can you please, please, if you engage, if you're wanting to find out the processes, I'm going to tell you them. I'm going to send you the information on them. A lot of what we send you is now in video format, so you can just watch it, all right? You'll get an email from me explaining how to get in and what it costs. You'll then get an email from Rose explaining all the other services that we have, okay? These emails are a maximum of two, three pages, max. All I ask you to do, ladies and gentlemen, because when you book an appointment with me, you can book it on your own, is just please take the time to read what we've sent you or listen to what we've sent you because it makes sense. It simplifies the process. It helps you understand it. And it allows you to then cut, formulate the relevant pertinent questions when you come to a consult. I get slightly frustrated when I, when somebody makes an appointment to see me and I, I, I get online and I'll say, right, John, you know, how can I help you today? Well, can you tell me how, it, how the immigration process works? I've already sent it to you, okay? You just haven't taken the time to read it, all right? So please, ladies and gentlemen, read it, okay? Because it's very simple to understand. We put it in a, in, a, in, a, in a format that people can understand it. And as I said, the first introduction, the email is literally just six little short videos that you can listen to. So you don't even have to read anything on that. But then scroll down to the attachments. The attachments will always be there in your first assessment and open them up and read them. The first attachment is two pages. The second attachment is our quote. The third attachment is an assessment form if you want to get the ball rolling. You'd tick on the quote box what you need us to do. You'd fill in the assessment form and send it back. We'll then send you the agreement and we are up and running. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to end on one note, okay? Uh, firstly, to say thank you to Desiree and Liz, and, um, as always, for being the people you are um, and the support you give with your, you and your team. Um, I'm outstandingly blessed. Uh, I, I, I'm humbled every day by the amount of effort that, that you know, our team put in. And that leads me to what I wanted to end on. We take this extremely seriously. This is your life we're talking about here. And I'd like to think that we take this as seriously as you do. So thank you, everybody, for listening to me tonight. Um, thanks, Jacqueline. But thank you, everybody, for listening tonight. I hope I hope it's been informative to you. Remember, if you need anything, please contact us. Stay safe wherever you are. Des, have a fantastic rest of your um, day in New Zealand because uh, it's night. And I will chat to you in your evening, my morning. And thank you, Liz, as always, for joining us. And thank you, Ron, for setting it up. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.